Today, for the first time in Africa, a self-flying air taxi will take the skies. So ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts, keep your minds open, and let's take off on this journey together. Murakazaneza Ichigari. And what I wanted to say is that we're here for the long run. We are here because we see the future of the continent, and that's what we're supporting. Business aviation is not a luxury, it is an economic driver. Ronda has launched Africa's first flying car, shocking the US. Have you ever dreamt of hoping on a car that doesn't need roads? A vehicle that lifts straight up, carries you above the traffic, and lands right where you need to be? For decades, science fiction promised it. Now, in the heart of Africa, that vision just might be taking flight. During the Aviation Africa 2025 summit, Rwanda stunned the world when it hosted Africa's first public demonstration of a self-flying air taxi. No pilot, no runway, just a compact electric aircraft rising into the sky on its own. It was sleek, silent, and straight out of the future. But here's the real question. Is this the beginning of a transport revolution or just a flashy take showcase? Can a small nation leapfrog decades of road building and become a leader in the skies? In this video, we're going to unpack what really happened at the historic demo, how the technology works, why Rwanda was chosen, and whether flying cars are truly Africa's next big leap or just an expensive dream. On the 4th of September 2025, all eyes were on Kigali as the city hosted the 9th Aviation Africa Summit and Exhibition. This wasn't just another conference about airports and airplanes. It was where Rwanda would introduce something bold, Africa's first public self-flying passenger air taxi demo. Inside the packed venue, government officials, aviation leaders, tech experts, and curious guests filled the hall with a mix of excitement and skepticism. The event had already begun on a high note, with President Paul Kagame's opening remarks. He spoke about Africa's aviation challenges, the high cost of air travel, weak intra-African links, and the urgent need of modern solutions. Rwanda, he insisted, was ready to lead by example. Then came the moment everyone was waiting for. On the runway outside, under the bright Kigali sun, a futuristic white craft rolled out. This was the Ehang EH216S, an electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, sleek, round, and compact. It looked like something straight out of the sky fi film. But this wasn't fiction. The air taxi's rotors began to spin. Slowly, it lifted from the ground, hovering steadily as the crowd gasped and phones shot up to capture the moment. In less than a minute, the EH216S climbed to nearly 100 meters above the city. It floated gracefully in the sky, buzzing gently before circling and then returning to land. The flight was short, but it was enough to prove a point. Rwanda wasn't just talking about the future, it was showing it. Officials from Ehang, the Chinese company behind the aircraft, stood proudly alongside Rwandan leaders. To them, this was more than a demo, it was a message. Rwanda wanted to position itself as a hub for next generation mobility and what they called like the low altitude economy. This concept means using airspace below traditional aviation levels for drones, air taxis, and cargo delivery, essentially building a new transport layer above congested roads. The crowd's reaction said it all. Many clapped and cheered, others simply stared in awe. To see a flying car rise in front of them was surreal. Rwanda described it as the start of a new chapter, one where Africa's cities could leapfrog the traffic struggles that plagued so many capitals, moving straight into the skies. The symbolism wasn't lost on anyone. Rwanda, a small landlocked country that has rebuilt itself steadily over the last three decades, was now grabbing headlines worldwide for bringing futuristic aviation to Africa first. Delegates from across the continent whispered about what this could mean for their own countries. Was this just Rwanda being ambitious or the beginning of something far bigger? Alan P. Ford, 
chairman of the Africa Aviation Summit, gave a very clear picture of the problem facing the aviation industry in Africa. He did not shy away from the truth and at the same time, he shared his belief that these problems could be solved if people worked together. One of the first things he pointed out was the issue of poor connectivity within the continent. For a continent as big and diverse as Africa, moving from one country to another by air should be simple and easy, but in reality, it is often very difficult. Travelers have to take long and expensive routes, sometimes flying to Europe or the Middle East first before returning to another African country. This not only wastes time but also makes flying unaffordable for many Africans. P. Ford explained that this poor connectivity also affects businesses. When goods cannot move quickly and easily across the continent, trade slows down. Companies cannot reach new markets efficiently and smaller businesses are especially hard because they don't have the resources to pay for costly shipping or complicated routes. This slows down economic integration across Africa, which is something leaders on the continent have been trying to improve for years. Tourism is another sector that suffers. Many African airlines still struggle with outdated systems, shorted of skills workers, limited infrastructure, and slow adaptation of international standards. This can affect everything from safety to customer service. For example, some airports may not have modern equipment, which makes it harder to manage flights on time. Delays, cancellations, and high costs are common problems that push travelers away from African airlines and airports. For aviation to thrive, these standards must be raised to match global expectations. Despite all these challenges, P. Ford's outlook was not negative. He stressed that solutions are possible if everyone works together. He highlighted the theme of the summit, collaborating to unlock Africa's growth. How can Africa deliver a sustainable aviation industry? This message was meant to remind both government and private businesses that aviation cannot grow in isolation. Partnerships are needed. Governments must provide policies that support growth. Airports must invest in better infrastructure and private companies must be ready to innovate and bring new technology into the sector. P. Ford also encouraged African countries to look at the bigger picture. Aviation is not just about flying planes. It's about connecting people, goods and cultures. A strong aviation sector can strengthen economies, create jobs and build stronger identity. For African in the global market, by uniting around common goals, leaders and stakeholders can create a system where flying in Africa is easier, safer and more affordable. His speech left listeners with a clear sense that the future of Africa aviation lies not just in fixing problems, but in working together to build a brighter, more connected tomorrow. So, what is it about EH216S? While it might sound futuristic, this aircraft is already real, tested and flying in several countries. Understanding what it is and how it works helps us see why many people are excited about its potential in Africa. In simple terms, the EH216S is a small, battery-powered flying vehicle built by the Chinese company Ehang. It is part of a new category of aircraft called EVTOLS. This means electric vertical takeoff and landing. Unlike regular planes that need long runways, EVTOLS can lift off straight up like a helicopter. The EH216S is designed to carry two passengers at a time, which makes it more like a personal air taxi than a traditional airplane. Now, let's talk numbers, because that's where the design really shines. The EH216S cruises at about 100 km per hour and can go a little faster if needed, reaching a maximum speed of 130 km per hour. Its flight range is 35 km and flight time is around 21 minutes before the batteries need recharging. It's not meant for cross-country trips or long journeys. Instead, it's built for short hops across busy cities, the kind of routes where sitting in traffic for hours could be replaced by a quick 15-minute flight. The S in EH216S simply stands for series or standard production model. That means it's not just a prototype anymore. It's a product ready for wider use, with governments and companies already showing interest in buying it. 
In fact, Ehang has received over 1,200 pre-orders worldwide. And in 2023, it became the first company in the world to receive an official airworthiness certificate for a fully autonomous passenger, EVTOL. That's a huge step because it means regulators now recognize it is a safe enough for public use. The aircraft itself is pretty fascinating. It has 16 propellers and 16 electric motors, all powered by rechargeable batteries. This design gives it balance and safety. Even if one motor fails, the others can keep the aircraft stable. It can carry up to 220 kilograms or 485 pounds, which covers two passengers and their light luggage. The cockpit has a canopy-style cover with wide windows, giving passengers a clear view of the skies and the city below. It even has gull wing doors that open upwards, adding a bit of style to the practicality. To keep it light and strong, the body is built with carbon fiber composites, and instead of wheels, it uses simple skid landing gear like a helicopter. What really makes the EH216S stand out is its autonomous flying systems. Unlike traditional aircraft that need a trained pilot, this one flies itself. The onboard computer uses a mix of sensors, radars, GPS, cameras, and a barometer to understand its surroundings. The system can make decisions in real time, choosing routes, avoiding obstacles, and landing safely. Behind the scenes, the aircraft is also connected to the Ehang Command Center, which monitors flights and provides extra support when needed. For passengers, that means you just get in, select your destination, and the machine does the rest. It's basically the flying version of hailing a ride on Uber. Ehang has already tested the EH216S in a variety of conditions. By 2020, it had logged over 2,000 passenger flights, Including trips in bad weather like fog and strong winds, tests have been conducted not only in China, but also in Dubai, Japan, Austria, Brazil, and now Rwanda. High-profile people like the Dutch Prince Pieter Christian and government officials in Dubai have already flown it, showing the company's confidence in its safety. What's more, Ehang is not stopping at passenger flights. The same aircraft design has been adapted into other versions. There's the EH216L, a logistic model for carrying cargo, and the EH216F, designed for firefighting in high-rise buildings. The firefighting version can carry 150 liters of foam and fire bombs, hover in front of a burning skyscraper and launch its fire extinguishing payload with precision. This shows that the platform can be used for more than just transport. It could also play a big role in smart city management. The company also envisions e-ports, futuristic hubs on rooftops, near water or on the ground where these aircraft can land, recharge and take off again. Imagine a network of sky stations across a city, making it possible for someone to book a flight, get picked up and be dropped off just a few kilometers away, all without touching a congested road. Now, this brings us to our last big question. Why Rwanda? If there's one thing Rwanda has shown the world in the past decade, it's that the country is not afraid to try bold ideas. Long before the air taxi demo in Kigali, Rwanda had already made headlines for using drones to solve very real problem, delivering blood to patients in need. Six years ago, this was a serious challenge. Rwanda is a small country with about 12 million people, and most of them live in rural areas. Emergencies happen everywhere car accidents, women suffering heavy bleeding during childbirth, or children needing urgent transfusions. In those critical moments, blood had to move quickly from storage centers to faraway hospitals, but getting blood from point A to point B wasn't simple. Unlike many countries where people mostly lived in cities, 83% of Rwandans lived in rural areas. The roads can be hilly, bumpy, and slow. Blood has a short shelf life, especially certain components like platelets, which spoil in just few days. A long drive on winding roads wasn't always the safest way to get such fragile cargo to patients. That's when the government decided to try something unusual. In 2016, Rwanda partnered with Zipline, a California-based drone company, to deliver blood by air. Here's how it works. 
A drone takes off from a distribution hub with blood packed inside a small insulated box. When it reaches the hospital, the box parachutes gently down and the drone turns around to head back. Quick, clean and surprisingly reliable. Today, Rwanda has two of these hubs and each can make up to 500 deliveries a day. That's a big jump from the old system of cars and motorbikes. Researchers studying the results found that drones didn't just save time, they also saved blood from going to waste. Before drones, hospitals often ordered extra stock, just in case. But unused blood would often expire. After Zipline came in, wasted blood dropped by more than 60% within the first year. Mary Paul Nisingiskwe, a Rwandan researcher, studied the numbers and was shocked by how immediate the change was. Even in the first few months, drones were cutting down delivery times by minutes to hours compared to driving. Over time, the benefits only grew stronger. But Rwanda's tech story doesn't stop with blood deliveries. The country has built a reputation for leaning into health innovation. Back in 2009, it tasted a program called Rapid SMS, a phone-based system that helped track pregnancies and reduce child and maternal deaths. By 2013, Rapid SMS had connected 15,000 villages to hospitals and doctors, showing how much tech could stretch across Rwanda's rural communities. On top of that, Rwanda has one of the most complete electronic health data systems in Africa. This means the Ministry of Health can track things like malaria cases, HIV treatment, and even the number of women giving birth at health centers. Having that kind of detailed data made it much easier to measure how drones were helping because everything was already being recorded. All of this explains why Rwanda was the right place to host Africa's first self-flying air taxi demo. The country has already proven that it's open to bold experiments and can make new technology work in real life. Drones that started out delivering blood are now part of daily life and for Rwanda, stepping into the world of autonomous passenger flights feels less like a leap and more like the next logical step forward. And like Alan Pifford said, Rwanda is well recognized as a leader in collaboration and action, not just sharing a vision for transformation, but working with others to deliver it. Thanks for watching. I am Jessica Amani and this is Afrimax. See you on the next one.